Appreciate you joining me today. It is September 13th, our reading. We're going to finish up Zechariah today. And what I want to do today is just look at a few of the messianic passages in the last few chapters in our reading, chapters 9 through 14. We'll start in chapter 11 as we have the flock. And to come down a little bit, oh, if I could get my computer to work. Here in chapter 11, let's look in verse look in verse 7. So I fed the flock for slaughter, in particular the poor of the flock. I took two staves, two staffs, the one I called beauty and the other I called bonds. I fed the flock. I dismissed the three shepherds in one month. Remember when Jesus is talking about, I am the true shepherd. All who came before me were, were thieves, and you have that passage. My soul loathed them, their soul also abhorred me. Okay, so he takes the staff, beauty, cuts it in two. I understand all this, it's like, well, what are we talking about? But when you come down a little bit further, so it was broken on that day, thus the poor of the flock who were watching me knew it was the word of the Lord. And then I said to them, if it is agreeable to you, give me my wages. And if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter. That princely price they set on me, so I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. And then I cut into my other staff bonds that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So we see the, of course, the 30 pieces of silver as well as the potter, and we're reminded of Judas. We're reminded of the amount of money, the price of a slave that they gave to Judas, and how, do you remember what Judas did with it? He came back and he throws it down, and they refused to take the money. And they used it to buy the potter's field. Remember when Judas first comes into the garden. Do you remember what Jesus says? Friend. It's the first word out of Jesus' mouth. Friend. Are you betraying me with a kiss? Back to our passage. Give me my wages. And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver. And we think about Jesus, and we think about what was done. We have the benefit of being on this side of the cross, so we have the benefit of knowing more assuredly what these things are speaking about and pointing towards. Come down a little bit further to chapter 12. Chapter 12, at verse 10. I will pour out, I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for firstborn. And that day there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem. And that's what happened. Even the centurion beat his breast. And there was a great mourning. Down a little bit further now into chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 1. In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for all the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. In that day, it shall be in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land. They shall no longer be remembered. I will also cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to depart from the land. And so we have what was going to be happening in that first century. As we have the idols, as well as the prophets. Anyway, my, I think that the, the question, one of the questions I have in looking at Zechariah, the, which prophets are being spoken about? That's one of the questions I have, but we'll have to save that for another study. Or you can study it on your own. Whether it's all prophets, whether it's all the prophets, if it's speaking about the cessation, the stopping of the spiritual gifts, or if it's talking about those prophets who had prophesied lies in the Old Testament. Um, read through Zechariah and see what's being spoken about. 
But again, it's it shall be in that day. So it's pointing to the future. And it's pointing to the same time when the idols would be cut off. Anyway, perhaps worthy of a future study. But here in chapter 13, when you come down, verse 7, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, says the Lord of hosts, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And then I will turn my hand against the little ones. This is where that quotation comes from in the New Testament. Strike the, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Now we come on to chapter 14 at verse 8. And in that day it shall be that living waters shall flow from Jerusalem. Living waters. Reminds me of Jesus speaking to the woman at the well. If you knew who I was. You remember what even the woman at the well says? Samaritan. We know that Messiah is coming. Remember what Jesus says? Let's see if we can find that passage real quick. John chapter 4, as Jesus is speaking to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked. He would have given you living water. The hour is coming. Verse 25, The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I, he, I who speak to you am he, and all of a sudden she's sitting on Jacob's well with the Messiah, and the Messiah is talking about living waters. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst. A fountain of water springing up. And we have the Zechariah prophecy. That living water shall flow from Jerusalem. Salvation is of the Jews, for we know. But the time is coming. It starts in Jerusalem, and it spreads out. The Messiah. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Thanks for studying along with me, just as we thought about Jesus today. Hope you join us tomorrow for another look into God's Word.